Hello, my friends, and welcome to another Pick a Card reading where I'll be looking at how to release your untapped potential. So we've got three decks here. We've got Pile 1, which is the Rainbow Heart Tarot. Pile 2, which is the Tarot del Fuego. And Pile 3, which is the Mystic Mondays Tarot. Pile 1, Pile 2, and Pile 3. Timestamps will be in the description box below. And I'll see you at your reading. Bye. Hello, Paul One, and welcome to your reading. So, how to release your untapped potential. Let's see what your oracle cards have to say. We've got conception, and it's reversed. So, the frequency of conception invites us to bring our consciousness to our origin, the place where everything in creation begins. It helps us to remember the infinite potential and possibilities of this space and that we can manifest through our own focused awareness and intention. So off the bat, we're getting that there is some kind of block in being able to make an idea begin um, for something to start. And then we've got fourth house home. So that's also reversed. So there may be some conditioned patterns of behavior um, that might have come from um, home, um, something from childhood possibly, something from when you were young um, that basically is stopping you from believing that you can bring this idea or bring your potential to the forefront to make it happen okay and then we've got perseverance reversed so i know what i can do whatever my i set my mind to and it's reversed so there's a sense of not being able to persevere with an idea or something to bring it to fruition and here we have number 46 which is 10 domestic harmony and it's reversed so what i'm getting here is something about the home some kind of like feeling um that comes innately from a maybe an unresolved pattern in childhood that is unable to allow you to commit to an idea or to commit to something or maybe just the idea that you can bring this your own full potential to the forefront that you can actually believe you can make it happen. Um, maybe there's a sense that you don't feel that you could complete it. Also, there may be something that you might disagree with as well. And um, there's something about like some kind of conflict um, with yourself in bringing your potential forward. And then we've got two of these cards. So we've got growth, which is reversed. And then we've got peace. So I don't know if there is some sort of sense of maybe not bringing this thing forward. Um, that even though essentially it will allow you to grow, um, there's a peaceful element to it. So sometimes we make decisions that are the easier option rather than the ones that would really help us to grow and to move forward. And then we've got impartiality, interesting. Okay, and that's, I think, crown chakra. So there's definitely something about allowing the divine to be able to connect with you to grow to make things happen to allow things to happen you may have ideas about things um and think they're really great ideas but oh no i can't i can't make that happen i can't do that um there seems to be some negative core belief that disallows you from letting the idea of you and your potential actually taking root um i'm getting just a lot of green here so there's something about the heart so maybe there's some injury to the heart chakra um that is kind of blocking you from allowing you to to kind of connect with a sense of impartiality towards this idea of yourself um 
So, for example, it could be that, like, you know, maybe you were told something in childhood um, that you don't you don't make things happen or you don't commit to certain things so you can never allow things to grow like it doesn't it doesn't grow when it's with you so for example you might have had a plant or something like that or even a pet and you weren't able to take care of it properly because you didn't know how to do so and probably because you weren't shown how to do so because that's how I feel um it could happen um, sometimes people expect you just to be able to know how to do these things um, rather than actually just help you to learn how to do these things. Um, that's a big kind of uh, thing with a lot of people where they feel like, oh, I just got given this thing um, and then I'm just expected to know how to deal with it when really you need to be taught how to deal with it. Um, and it's because the people that were there that were showing you or who should have shown you how to kind of cultivate this sense of growth within yourself, um, they weren't able to because they couldn't do it, you know. Um, they didn't know how to do it. They didn't know how to pers persevere with something. It's almost like, oh, well, if I'm not going to be successful at this, I'm just going to like leave it. Oh, why should, why should I even bother? Because it's just really not, I, I don't think that I can do that, you know. There's something that's stopping you. Um, some kind of negative core belief um, that is that is really taken root instead of allowing you and it kind of destroys everything um, rather than you allowing yourself to kind of connect with a sense of kind of detachment and think right no there's something that I have to relearn about this um, so instead of you persevering with it um, you just kind of think, oh, no, I just I, I just can't make it happen. I can't do that. So this is really interesting. OK, let's see what the tarot has to say about this. Yeah, so first of all, we've got like the the initiation of ideas. There's been something that has been just clamp down um, not allowed to take root there may be just like this belief as soon as you have an idea about something it's like oh no 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 I can't do that I can't do that the eight of wands and it's a very fast reaction usually when we have these types of negative core beliefs um, the the reaction is so fast that we can't we don't even see um, how we're reacting to the situation it's almost like a jump to the negative or jump to the I can't or no, that's something that I can't do. Um, the word can't is coming up. At, like I'm, I'm hearing that a lot. And we've got justice. So this to me says that there is something here and also the law of the land, the law of the universe is pushing you um, into a place where you're having to confront this. You're having to confront this um, this thing in you that is stopping you from tapping into this potential. This is your calling in a way. We haven't got, I mean, it's not judgment. We'll see what else comes up. But justice, it kind of says to me that the universe is giving you the opportunity to be able to confront this and change this. Whether or not you take the step to be able to do that is a different matter. We'll find out. Okay, first of all, we've got the five of wands. Yeah, there's this conflict. This real conflict um, within you um, that every time you do try to start it, um, it, like it could be a business or something. And every time you try to initiate um, some kind of thing and you think, oh, yeah, this would be a good idea. I don't know. Maybe there's also um, other people, other voices. Usually the um, negative voices that are in our head are an amalgamation of all the negative feedback that we've received over time. So this could be um, other people, other friends. I'm seeing it in a more kind of casual sense, but it also could be like brothers and sisters and um, families and stuff like that. Basically, people saying that you can't do what you, you know, what you want to do. Or so many other people are doing what you're doing. How can you think that that you can be successful in this? And the two of cups. So there may have been reversed. So there may have been like a an ultimatum that was given. Um, you know, if you do this, then I don't think I'll be able to support you in that. Or I don't think that I'll be able to do this with you. So there may have been some kind of compromise that was made 
so that you could maybe keep a person, maybe it's in a relationship or something like that, that you had to kind of dumb down and uh, suppress, put out, so that you could maintain the um, longevity of the relationship. But what's actually happened is that this relationship, you could it's not really been anything that's, like it's gone anyway, or it's almost over before it's began um, because of this, because you've had to suppress that. And one more card, and then we'll do some clarification. The Six of Wands, yeah. So you probably, did, well, then maybe in a way, then you did end up being um, being together with this person or you did end up keeping some kind of balance and harmony. It could be a parent, it could be a friend or something like that where, you know, by the dumbing down of your idea, you have like managed to kind of ascertain some some small victory, a small victory where you've been like, okay, well, at least I've got some kind of peace from this situation. But really, it's almost like you've you've suppressed something. Um, so let's see, how are you going to change this? Because there is something here that tells me that you want to change this. You wouldn't be at this reading if you didn't want to. You you know, there's a belief that you have this sense of um, potentiality that needs to be realized and needs to be unleashed. So let's see. How can pile one unleash their potential how can part one unleash their potential okay so we've got the weaver okay i need to look at the book for that bear with me one second so the weaver is the page of swords so there's definitely something that that is here that you know you want to change it you do want to change it but there's something that you're not looking at um and maybe the part that you played in that and you denying yourself of this and then we've also got the seven of cups the seven of lotuses so there's a lot of dreaming going on a lot of idealization about what you feel the possibilities are of the fact of whether or not you can realize your potential so the dreams are there there is a want, there is a desire to do this. The phoenix reversed. This is definitely untapped potential, definitely. Um, there is something within you that is not being allowed to rise and it is specifically with you. And what you're doing currently is not the thing that you're going to, that is going to be able to unleash your potential. Because there's, there has to be something completely different, something that you haven't thought of before, something that you, is just a new way of looking at the situation, a new way of doing things. You're going to have to take radical action in order to rise from this situation because it's deeply ingrained. And just dreaming about the possibilities. Yes, okay, things do start with like a thought, but there is something about tangible, real action that needs to take place. And what this justice card is telling me is that you have to think in a, like the, the universe is conspiring in a way to encourage you to feel and to, to, to do something completely different. Think, feel, be emotionally connected to, um, spiritually as well. In all aspects, something needs to change drastically in order for you to change your potential, for you to release this potential. Because right now it's, it's blocked. It can't rise up. And then you've got the Ace of Lotuses. So with that there, that tells me that almost the naysaying that's been going on, maybe the fire that is up your butt that will help you to make this Ace of Lotus rise, to help you realize that actually, no, I can do it. Because there may be these people here have tried to do what you're doing and they don't... Um, they, they, they haven't done it. And yet they're still commenting on your situation. And it's that whole thing. Don't listen to people who haven't done what you want to do. Listen to the people who have achieved what you want to do. Look at the people who, who are doing what you want, what you see, what you, what you aspire to. You have to look towards those people. And that's the way that you can release your untapped potential. And then we have the mender. Oh, well, what card is that? <laughs> so the mender is a cups card. Uh, one of the cups, um, the mender, which is the queen of cups. So 
This is about you prioritizing your own feelings above anything else. And even if it seems that your feelings may be irrational to others, it's really important that you don't see things that way. And the thing is, is that people might see that, but you know that it isn't. And the whole thing about the lotus is it rising from the mud. Um, so from the kind of like naysaying, the, the negative energy, the negative vibes, it's about you being able to transmute that. And you've got a real opportunity to do that with the phoenix here, justice, and also the mender, which says to me that you've got an opportunity to mend the, the kind of broken pieces that have been like kind of shattered previously by people or by thought forms or by beliefs which usually come from other people talking to you or other people telling you what you should do with your your own life is actually what what part do they play it's your life you know and the eight of trees okay I think also you, like there's an underestimation in the sense of work that you're going to have to do. You may have to do some shadow work. You may have to do some other kind of work. I don't know, but there is some work that needs to be done here. And it's, you know, you can't, you can't rely on the fact that there's just small successes. Okay, yeah, you've realized this and you've realized that you've got this untapped potential and you want to do something about it. You're going to have to do something really, really drastic to do it. It's going to be something that has to change significantly within your person, within you, within your personality, within your, your, your being. It has to change like massively. And I think it's going to be something that has to, um, that has to be like an innate change within you. Let me just, I'm going to clarify this eight of trees life map. That's the wheel of fortune. So essentially you you can't get things immediately just because like a, the immediate success there is like a small success you may think that oh yeah I've made some progress that's not it you you will have to continue going and almost there has to be a sense of you being able to um uh be able to take rejection um and and be able to uh, train yourself to be able to wait that things need a plan. You can't just go in and just do things. You have to you have to go back to the drawing board, redraw up your plan, think of a different way of being able to do things and then also make a plan to do this thing and be committed to the plan. Because there's there's some deep programming that's happened here and you're going to have to reprogram it if you want to untap your potential. Now, obviously, this, this deck is, a, is very green, but that's the, that's the color that's coming forward to me. And it's interesting because I've got two chakra cards. Um, that, like, so we've got this chakra card and we've got another chakra card. So it'll be interesting to see what it says. But definitely something to do with the heart chakra and healing the heart chakra. So anything that is going to open up your heart space is going to be great. Anything, if you can do it physically, initially, because that's the thing that we have the most control, control over that's going to be something that really helps you to to kind of open up on a physical level immediately because all you need to do is you you can just do like say the camel pose or something like that in yoga or something that is chest opening something that's going to allow your chest to open your shoulders drawn back your head held up so that you can look towards the sky you can look towards the crown chakra and you can open that heart and that crown chakra to receive the downloads that it needs in order to move forward to open up your potential, to unleash your potential. And then you will start, it will start blossoming like a beautiful flower. But this is very much the idea of a flower coming to the surface. We've got these kind of like flower images here, do you know what I mean? So it's where the growth has been stunted. Things have to like grow, they take time. It, it's a plan that you're, you're kind of putting together and you're making it grow. And you have to, and just because it's growing like a little bit doesn't mean like, oh yeah, that's it, I'm doing the right thing. There still has to be a consistent sense of work that's going on. Yes, celebrate your, your initial kind of successes. Yes, give yourself like, you know, the nourishment that you need. Maybe that's what's happened. Like maybe you get to a certain point, you succeed and then you end up berating yourself or doing something that self-sabotages and stops that plant from growing. So what might be needed is that you need this consistent kind of like encouragement to help this thing to grow. So the potential isn't going to be just released like a dam, yeah? It's going to be something that's going to have to take time in, in regards of you being able to cultivate it rather than it just happening. 
Okay, let's see what your other oracle cards have to say. So let's get some angelic support for you. Rejuriel. Wow. Okay, interesting. So, well, we've got the number four. So there's this like, and like one plus three is four. So this sense of stability that is needed. I'm just going to have a little look in the book to see what it says, because I usually have like a keyword. And it's creativity. So it's, it's, it's about you being able to, to be creative without holding yourself back. You are a creator. Don't allow doubts to hold you back. You are gifted. You are an inspiration and you can do it. All you have to do is start. Begin your creation today. And I think like if you start something and then you like get a bit despondent because it's not turning out like a Picasso, but say for example, you're painting. If it doesn't turn out like a masterpiece when you first start, everybody has to start somewhere and that's where the journey begins. And I think that's what's going on. Like maybe there was this thing where you, you started lots of stuff because what I'm seeing is a lot of like holes that have been dug and they've been started to kind of dig down deep, but then, and to, to, to create something, but then it's been stopped. And that may be because of this patterning. So once you understand about going back to this patterning, you have to, when you come up against these roadblocks, when you start your creation again, then you're able to like consistently move on. You need a plan in place to help you to consistently grow rather than just thinking it's going to grow by itself because it's not. Interesting. Okay, so Rejuriel, that's definitely an archangel you should call upon. Okay, and yeah, let's have a look at the chakra. Power, will, self, and it's, so this is the Manipura chakra. This is the um, solar plexus chakra. So you've got to will yourself. You've, you know, procrastination is not a option here. You have to consistently be this sun so that you can, you can cultivate this, this potentiality to grow within you because it, it is going to take work. And it's not like, oh my God, yeah, it's going to be like loads of hard work. This is about you building the confidence or building the, the ability within yourself, you know. This is how the, the potential right now is a tiny little seed. And now you have to like make it grow. Or it might have been a little plant, but then it was kind of suppressed or stunted. So you have to, you have to create this will, this sun, in order to create the warmth that will generate the energy to help this build. So I have picked two of these magical spell casting cards. Right, okay, so we've got fertility, right? And again, number 10. Right, okay, so we've also got um, victory. So I shall celebrate, I shall rise, I shall let victory make me wise. I shall celebrate, I shall rise, I will let victory make me rise. Do take these and you can, oh my God, look, seeds and sprouts. So do take this. And use it as a mantra, maybe every morning, every day. And we've got eight here, which comes back to the eight of um, pentacles. So it's this thing where it needs consistent work. You know, you need to build upon it. That's what I'm seeing. Things need to build because, you know, you've got like masses of potential, um, but it needs work to get there. You need to create the warmth, the will. And it's also will, you know, being consistent, being persevering. So we have that. And then we also have fertility. Let all take root, seed and sprout. Let new life be about. Let all take root, seed and sprout. Let new life be about. Let all take root, seed and sprout. Let new life be about. So I find that when I say affirmations or things um, three times, and I do that on a daily basis, in a time when I'm maybe meditating or after I've meditated or in a period of like where I'm just with myself, that this is something that helps it to really embed in the subconscious and make it take root within the consciousness and um, within the, the, the conscious mind. Um, another good time as well to do this is just before bed. So in the morning and in the evening, this is something to help you cultivate that. So, and also what I've got is a question as well to help you prompt that seed. Aphitius, Aphitius, I think that's how you say it. So it says here, what if just because you can doesn't mean you should? Interesting. So what if just because you can doesn't mean you should? And I don't know, I feel like that that's a question that, that you, 
you may ask yourself um, when you're considering whether or not to bring these into conception. Because, yeah, I can do that, but should I, you know? Um, that might be something that you, you might need to consider. Should you? Should you do it? That's, that's a question only you can answer. But what's quite obvious here is that you absolutely have this unpotential, um, this, um, this uh, potentiality that's been stunted, that's been disallowed to be able to rise. And you have the power within yourself to be able to do that. But you need to ask yourself and answer for yourself, should you do that? Because, you know, I don't think you'd be at this reading if that was the case. Like, you, you'd be like, well, I don't think I should or whatever. But I think you really want to. So you have to, Im you have to implement these aspects of fertility and victory. And I mean, you know, I think it's important because I think there's also some kind of self-esteem issue here, particularly with this, like, sun card. So you may have lower self-esteem. So you might need to look specifically at... Um, at exercises that build up your self-esteem. So that's my advice for you, part one. I hope you found this useful. If you did, please do like the video. Please do subscribe as well um, for more videos. But otherwise, I wish you all the best with this. You can do it. I know you can because you're amazing, part one. All right, my darlings, I'll see you soon. Bye. Hello, Pal 2, and welcome to your reading. We're going to be looking at how to release your untapped potential. So let's see from your oracle cards what's happening. So we've got the Merkaba. Wow, the frequency of the Merkaba supports our ability to use our consciousness to traverse into other layers of reality and dim dimensions. It activates our... Um, access to our Akashic inheritance as well, merging the totality of our experience into our present to serve our highest purpose. Wow. Okay. So definitely something guided here from spirit to, to push you into a space where you can realize this potential. You're being called to do it. It may be a difficult situation as well that has been, that has pushed you into this space where you need it to happen. Um, five three plus two is five five is is a number of difficulty um difficulty and kind of motivation and um, difficulty can be very good for um creating a really good strong root and foundation so let's have a look at your astrology we got virgo digest and it's reversed okay interesting so something about routines about habits Something that you may need to change. Um, if we want to take it to a really mundane level, you could be a smoker or a drinker, and there may be something that is damaging you, and you need to you need to give up those things, or you may need to start some kind of routine. Maybe you um, exercise or um, something that initiates um, some kind of uh, clarity in connection with you being able to realize your untapped potential. And then we have surrender. Okay, well that makes sense with Virgo reversed. Surrender, and also we've got we've got six, and then we've also got nine. So one, one we've got ten. So there's a there's an inability to surrender, and with Virgos, it it, it can be very very difficult for that that kind of energy of Virgo when it's afflicted to let go, to be able to take up something new. Um, there's kind of like you're, you're, you're kind of defeated before you start because you haven't surrendered to the possibility of what could happen. And then we've got health. Interesting. With Virgo as well. Health. I will honor the physical vessel that enshrines my soul. Right. So I don't know. I think this is this might be something to do with your body, Paul, um, Paul, Paul 2. Um the body is the vessel that, that you know, it's, it's the first instance that we have immediately of, of our physical reality. So if we want anything to happen, we start with the body. Um, and that's the one thing also that you can control. Obviously, like when you, when you, um, when you do things, um, you know, sorry, when you, um, when, when there are health compromises, um, obviously, you know, you may, it, it is, there's, there's various different reasons why we have health afflictions, and I'm not really going to discuss that here. But um, 
there are things that you can do to help yourself. And I think that this is a priority here. But the the thing is here is that there is this inability to surrender. And what's really interesting is we usually with Virgo, there's um, when it's uh, uh, like kind of, um, what's the word? When it's like badly aspected or when there's like, it's in its detriment. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, when it's in its detriment, um, there's usually things to do with digestion. And that's to do with like holding on to things and not being able to surrender. And it's interesting, like, obviously the Merkaba coming up, these cards, all of them, they have the Merkaba, but we've got it twice. So you've got like a real calling from spirit to ask you to surrender because it's, it's in your best interest for you physically. And almost also, sorry, that you will see results from of you unleashing your potential by surrendering by understanding these issues that you are holding on to and then they manifest within your you know within your reality within your um your body and okay right anger reversed so what i'm getting here is uh, is repressed anger and repressed anger is is a number one cause of many ailments um I see it a lot with people um, when they're not able to express their anger in a healthy way. Um, you know, it manifests in different ways. So I'm not saying like, you know, I don't know. You may be somebody who kind of keeps things inside, doesn't express them. And that's why things like exercise and getting into the body is really good. That's why routines are really good. So for example, if you don't have like a morning routine that helps you to get on track first thing in the morning, you may feel, feel discombobulated the whole day and then that affects you. And then it causes you to hold on to things and then it carries through to the next day. So there's some kind of form of initiation of a routine that is going to be very, very um, useful for you, Pearl, to, to unleash your potential and prayer and then we've got this beautiful yellow which is the um solar places chakra so definitely to do with power as well because i feel like power gets conditioned by this lack of surrender if you don't like involve yourself in this space um and be able to just like just surrender to it um then this is why things hold on. This is why things kind of work out the way they do. And um, this is why you can't unleash that potential because it's kind of like just suppressed. And I mean, this whole reading for all of the all of the decks are going to be about some kind of suppression that's going on because it's your untapped potential. It's something that's hidden. It's not there. Usually when it's untapped, that means that we've denied that we've got that in that respect. We don't, we don't believe that we have that. And even that core negative belief about us not thinking that we have that untapped potential or that we have that potential, sorry, then, you know, that's already a suppression to say no. And of course, it's, it's, it's important to be able to say no, but then what are you saying no to? Are you saying no to yourself? Are you saying no to the possibilities of yourself? Because it seems like the Merkab is going, hi, I'm trying to, I'm trying to channel this energy to you. Definitely with the sense of prayer. And I think that's something that invokes your power. Something that is going to make you feel powerful is going to be really helpful in being able to channel this in a really good way. Okay, so let's have a look at what the tarot has to say about this situation. About how Pile 2 can release their untapped potential. How can Pile 2 release their potential, their true potential? How can you release your true potential? Pearl 2. How can Pearl 2 release their, their potential? Knight of Wands. There's definitely like a sense of you like, oh, maybe, yep, yep, yep. There's this resistance. And and if, if you're feeling like you should go for things, and I don't know, there may be some questioning going on. Like, oh, I'd, like, in a way, as I said, that all the paths are going to be similar because it's almost like this sense of questioning oneself. But because we've got the solar plexus chakra here, I also think as well, just on a side note, that you can't pray your way out of a situation. You can't think, oh yeah, I wish it's going to be like that. It's not going to happen. You have to take action. And the night is being disallowed from moving forward. So let's find out why. 
the chariot. Interesting, there's a massive sense of conflict here because I think you might go forward in other avenues or in other ways. But then when it comes to this, there's still something else. There's still something about your drive that is not going forward. There's almost like a sense of you going in one direction. And this, this also says to me that you've got the potential to be able to re be really driven. But there's a commitment that's not happening. And definitely with that Knight of Wands reversed, the sense of commitment is 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 too afraid to commit. <clears throat> it's like almost like you'll be it's a bit FOMO, fear of missing out. King of Swords. And there's a sense of like being quite disciplined with yourself anyway. I think like you might be really disciplined in other areas. But then when it comes to you and yourself, I feel like you might not be. And then because of that, that's when these things happen. Temperance. Yeah, there's an imbalance here for sure. Absolutely. Of self, right? So it's like you moving forward in one sense, thinking that I make progress in one sense, and that's amazing, and I do that. But is that what you really want? And then you kind of leave it up to chance for other things to come forward. And then you get angry or you're like disappointed because anger is always a cover for something else. Anger is always like the, the kind of like outwardly reaction like the or the initial thing, but it's usually masking something else. So what this is asking you to do is to look at where you do hold discipline in your life. And there's a technique in coaching that we use that it's building upon a skill that you already have and applying that to something else. So, so maybe you do have a routine in the morning. Say you, you, you know, say for example, really small, like you make your bed in the morning and you make sure that you do that every morning, build upon that, put on another thing. So maybe then maybe do five minutes of movement in your body or something that connects you to your body, something that allows you to be, to, to, to engage in something that helps you to surrender and then once you've got that and you've managed to build upon that and say you've been doing that for about five, six, seven days, weeks, you know, build it up, then you can add on another thing. And then it just builds in that respect. And then before you know it, you do have a morning routine if you didn't have one before. Six of Cups. I think, I definitely think that you were able to do this. Like that you you, you may have had um, a an ability to be able to do this before. Like you definitely, you, you, you can make things manifest. You know that this potential exists, but it's almost like it's, it's dormant. Um, it's become like you may, it may be something that you've forgotten. Maybe you loved dancing when you were younger or something like that. And you felt so free and that's when you were truly surrendered. But then you've kind of like left it by the wayside. And now it's really important for you to get back into your body so that you can like tap into that health aspect. And then we've got the moon. Okay, right. So there may be some kind of like, I don't know, maybe some psychological issues in the respect of that. There may be something that is stopping you. These Not just these negative core beliefs. There may be some other things that might be the, that you have had, that have, that have come into play, that have stopped you from believing that you have this. So... What I'm seeing here with the King of Swords is that you don't need to you don't need to do this. You don't need to stick the sword in that space in your heart. You don't need to do that. There doesn't need to be that sense of self-sacrifice. It's very strong. You have that and it's really clear. But there's there's something else that needs to go back towards the passion and 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 like being able to surrender yourself to that because the King of Swords is very stoic. Um, is very decisive. They know what's right and they know what the score is. So if you have so much kind of um, like uh, determination in that, in that aspect of your personality, can you think like what it's stopping you from doing? You know, what other things could you surrender to? What other things could you kind of let yourself go to? And even in that respect, you could still attack it with the same sense with the King of Swords. You don't have to compromise yourself. You can still go ahead and go forward and use use that energy of the King of Swords to be able to turn this temperance around, to be able to manage this moon. Because I think this moon needs to be managed. I don't think there's something that, you know, it, it's, it's basically knowledge. Knowledge is power. So the more that you know, there may be something in denial about your health as well that, that, that might be happening as well. And there's a clear sign here that something to do with your body 
is is going to be something that and with daily habits like it may be that you're you're eating a certain thing every day and it's the thing that you've already done and you've only done that and you don't want to give up that you know but then what happened if you did for like maybe like say five days whatever and i know that may be long but like we just take it one day at a time so one day and the next day and the next day maybe you need to cut out sugar maybe you need to i, I don't know but there's just something here that says to me that there is something that if you keep on going the way that you do, it could turn out to be a bigger problem than you anticipated. And then it could pop out whenever. So the moon warn the moon is a warning here to tell you that you, you actually do have to do this. Ten of Swords reversed. And I think there is a realization here. Um, you realize that things have to change. You realize that things have to be over. It may be like a period of your life where you felt that you weren't empowered and you had to act a particular way and you had to go that way. But now it's about revisiting that so that you're able to like reignite that and be able to come back to that night of one's energy. Let's have a little look on how you're going to implement that, how you're going to unlock your potential part one. Well, that's interesting. So the Knight of Wands is clarified. I think that's the Knight of Wands again. Let me just double check. But it's upright, which is fantastic. Yeah, it's the Knight of Wands. So you've got you've got the Knight of Wands reversed, clarified by the Knight of Wands. So that means that you're just taking action. You're just going for it. And, you know, you've as I said, you've got this energy of being able to do that. But you've got to put it in this other thing. In this other thing that you know, like if it is about you being able to establish some kind of routine that helps you to build upon this strength, you know. And then we've got the seven of embers. Interesting because we've got the phoenix reversed here and we had the phoenix reversed in pile one. So again, there's this sense. What I'm seeing here is I'm seeing a train that's on a railroad. And it's up to you to, to really take the, the action to like move the railroad one way. And you ha it, it's really essential that you do that because there could be a tendency to, to keep on going down the same railroad that you were in um, because it's what you're used to. It's what you, you, you know. But I do see this as you also overcoming like some old ghosts of the past of you, um, you understanding what it is exactly that you have to change. I don't think you're afraid of like starting again and being able to do things. I think that actually you're very um, adept at being able to 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 change that pile too. We've got Dream World. Okay, so this is a this is an extra card with this deck and it's reversed. So I think what this means is about the possibilities. When we've got like particularly with the kings, there is a very fixed ideal about stuff, a fixed a fixed goal and that needs to go in the bin that fixed image needs to go somewhere else and you need to surrender your ideals you need to surrender the the expectations that you have of yourself in order to release your potential it's really important because i think it's going to turn up in a way that you never imagined but if you just consistently do the work then it's going to come to fruition but you have to believe that it could be anything. And that might be quite hard. Okay, so this is the lovers. Is it lovers? Yeah, lovers card reverse, temperance. But there's a big imbalance here. And it is to do with like personal relationships. I don't know whether you believe that there's um, a certain ideal that you have about your personal relationships and about what part they play in your life. Um, something needs to be rejigged here. Something needs to be changed here massively. It will actually hold the key. This will hold the key to you being able to change that about yourself and being able to untap this potential, unlock it. Um, because I think maybe there might be some um, advice from somebody who's very close to you, who's trying to help you. And there's a denial of this. There's a no. There's a clear no. There, oh, you know, It's like, no, I don't want to listen to that. I don't want to hear that. And if you find yourself doing or, or kind of engaging in that kind of conversational behavior, particularly with yourself, then that is something where that, that there's, a, there's a thread. There is a key right there for you to be able to like look at how is this affecting and afflicting my possibility of unleashing my potential. 
I like that. Because we've got a key here. A real key. And I do think, like, listen to the people that love you. Listen to the people that really care about you. Really engage in the relationships where people really care about what you're doing. Um, and care about you because with that with that knight of swords energy there's a tendency to like not be able to listen to other people and that might be you know that might be something that can be improved upon and definitely when you're trying to take control of situations the surrender you, the, the, the inability to surrender you can't but when the king of one when the king of swords is in his most exalted state he does surrender he can surrender but you know it's this whole thing like i'm right you need, and it's not afflicted. I feel like you've got the potential to be able to do that, but you have to rise up to the challenge, which means that you have to understand and also recognize that there is a massive imbalance here. There is, full stop. We've got two major arcanas here. So the, the universe is telling you, you've got an imbalance here that you need to redress because you're going too fast in one direction, which is what we're going, what we've got here with the Knight of, um, both the Knight of Wands and with the Chariot. It's just like going like full steam ahead. I know what's right for me. I know what I'm doing. I know how this works. This here is saying no. And you have to let go of that, particularly with that moon reversed. And I don't know if there's also like a scare, a, a fear of the unknown as well. But there also may be like, I don't know, I'm seeing maybe a little bit of like, and I don't, I don't use this lightly, okay? Um, but like something obsessive happening. It's not the devil, but it's almost like when there is an obsessive tendency that we don't know what the impact is of it towards other people around us, then that could be something to think about. Okay, five of cups, six of cups, interesting. So the five of cups is clarifying the six of cups. So there's, even though that there's this, this, it's like, oh, I want things to be how they used to be. I want things to be how they were. Um, there's a sense of nostalgia. You may be like following a sense of nostalgia. That is, that is this chariot that's just going, charging ahead. And really, you know, you, you just want to kind of chase that thing coming back to like what it was. And I think what's also important is that surrendering, it's not going to be how it was because it never is. Nothing is ever the same. So it, it's going to come about, but it's going to come about in a completely different way that you didn't, you didn't anticipate. The Ten of Wands. I think that maybe there's been a situation that you have been um, kind of really kind of struggling with. And now... Even by coming to this reading, I really do think that there's like some impetus for you to Im implement this uh, release of your potential. Um, you know, you, you're not wanting to continue with the slog of it all. You're wanting to change this um, and you're wanting to do something different. So the the possibility of change is definitely there, part one. And, um, you know, you're, you're wanting to do this. You're wanting something else. You've had enough. You've had enough of this kind of like mode of behavior that you have been implementing for this time and now you're looking to change it, which is great. But are you ready to let go of those beliefs? That's the question because we've got two tens here. So let's see what the last card is. The dreamer, and that's the queen of swords reversed. Okay, right, I hear it. So this is negative self-talk, part two. Negative self-talk. Maybe you are, you are berating yourself about things that were, how things were, how things used to be, and why can't it be the same way that it used to be? Why can't it, why, you know, it, 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 this is like, this is proper self-flagellation, self-attacking, you know? And look at this, like, she has the ultimate ability to be able to create anything. With the Queen of Swords upright, it is this sense of you being so clear and understanding what you want, your boundaries are really clear. You know what you want. When it's reversed, the boundaries are not there. You know, even be, saying no is not like in the way that is being displayed here is not the way of boundaries here. Boundaries is in the way like you being able to see where your boundaries are by surrendering to the fact that you have been living a certain way or been doing things a certain way that have enabled you to, to suppress your potentiality, to suppress this potential. And no praying is going to get it out of that, you know, is gonna, is gonna make it happen. You have to change. 
Wow. Very interesting pile too. Okay, let's see what your other cards have to say. So let's get some angelic support for you. Aerial nature. This is about nature. And, you know, I think you also have to understand that you do have power. And there's a certain element of courage as well that is needed to surrender into that space. You need courage to do that. Being vulnerable is not like, oh, yeah, it's weak. Far from it. Being vulnerable is a sense of true power. And when you go into nature and you see how nature kind of just interacts with itself and just is what it is, you know, I'm getting the image of like a little sprout coming out of uh, out of the cement. It will grow no matter what. It doesn't matter where it is. A flower will bloom on the side of the road because it's, that's where it's going to bloom. It doesn't matter if it's going to bloom at the side of the road. It's not thinking, oh, my God, like I'm blooming on the side of the road. It's like, oh, um, oh it's on the, it's on a road can't believe it it's not in a big bouquet of flowers or in a prize garden they just bloom so it's it's about that understanding the the real kind of sense of courage that's needed to be able to just surrender no matter what happens there's no status and that that there's there's a sense of like needing to achieve something to get somewhere and that needs to like go in the bin um let's have a look at your chakra cards you've got two so organized you've got it you, you've got the discipline here, Saturn, you've got it, you've got it, it's, it's a talent in you, I think you're, you're you, or you've got the potential to be, if you're not already quite disciplined and organised, you do have the potential to do that, um, and it is something that's really innate, I think, but with this here, it says that, you know, you, you do have to, when you surrender, it means that you're, you're taking up something new. You're understanding that a new mode of being is going to be beneficial for you without any kind of prejudice about it. And to, to be consistent in that is that organization um, coming from the root chakra as well. And it takes time. Saturn is time. It's the timekeeper. So it's going to take small incremental steps for you to make this happen. Um, same like with pile one, it, 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 it's a process, it's not, and I think just the whole thing with unlocking potential, it's not about, oh yeah, I just unlock my potential and bam, it comes like, as I said at the beginning, like a dam, it's more about like just incremental steps and then before you know it, you turn around and then you've climbed a mountain, it's like that, so self-acceptance, I mean with with the queen of swords reversed and also the king of swords, there is like, and you've got Mercury communication. How do you communicate to yourself, Paul? Two, how do you talk to that beautiful self of yours? Talk to yourself with love and compassion, um, understanding that you know this is really, you know, you need to be, you need to be kind to yourself, and you know, being able to instigate some kind of um, routine is about being kind to yourself. Because most of the time we're not. We we um we castrate ourselves and if we don't say for example if we miss one day then we think oh what's the point you know i don't see that really with too much with you but like i just think that self talk like if you don't if you haven't done it perfectly as well just watch that self talk that's going to be so key for you and i think that that's what's happening with the um imbalance here it's it's the love for oneself and with that queen of swords reversed the love for oneself is not there. It's actually really attacking the self. Okay, so we've got two cards here, which are the magical spell cards. Now, these are like affirmations that you can use. Um, first one is strength, strength, stability in this hour, endurance, stamina, I am power. You are very strong, Paul, too. You are. I see you as, you know, with that king and queen energy, very, very strong, very determined, um, you know, and also with the chariot as well, you know, you go forth. It is number seven. So there is this sense of like, you know, it is not easy um, to do this. And if you want that, um, if you want that phoenix to rise and that seven of embers to turn the right way up, you will have to implement strength and strength comes from discipline and being organized. So strength, stability in this hour, endurance, stamina, I am power and say that three times. Strength, stability in this hour, endurance, stamina, I am power. Strength, stability in this hour, endurance, stamina, I am power. So that will help you. Good time to say it, as I said to part one, say it just before you go to bed. First thing when you get up in the morning, really, really good affirmations to help yourself and to know that you've got the determination to maintain these this discipline. 
romance oh my god and then you've got it with the lovers here do you know what i mean romance romance is a sacred power let it come to me this hour romance is a sacred power let it come to me this hour romance is a sacred power let it come to me this hour we've got that with that 32 23 number five you know, it, it's about you not being disappointed within yourself. We've got the five of cups here. So not, you know, just being in love with yourself. You know, this sense of discipline is showing love to yourself, is showing compassion to yourself, is showing um, is showing just real, real genuine love to yourself. And that's what's needed here, I think. I think you're very hard on yourselves, pal, too. And it's really important that you are not. It's almost like I'm... <laughs> I'm kind of almost having a go at you to have to have compassion for yourself, which is slightly um, contradictory. But um, take care of yourself, Baltu. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> with love, with love. I love you, Baltu. Okay, right. So we've got, oh, wow. Canis Venatasi. So what if you were strong enough to stand alone, but wise enough to accept the support of others? Oh, my God. I love that. That is exactly what this is saying. So what if you were strong enough, I'll hold this up to you, what if you were strong enough to stand alone but wise enough to accept the support of others? Beautiful, beautiful pile two. So there's um, a little coaching session for you. I hope you enjoyed this reading. <laughs> If you did like this reading, please do give it a thumbs up. Please do subscribe for more videos. But otherwise, I wish you all the best with this. Just take care of yourselves, pile two. It's really important. Don't be so hard on yourselves. It's going to be okay. Get some of this puppy love. And, um, you know, get get a nice puppy and, like, cuddle it. Or just look at the puppy pictures. Um, or puppy, puppy memes or whatever. Or puppy, like, you know, TikToks or whatever. It might really help you to, like, embrace the love within yourself. Because you're doing this to unleash your potential, okay? You, you need to do this to, to unlock something beautiful within yourself. And, um, yeah, just remember that sense of surrender. It will really help you. All right, pile two. I'll see you in your next reading. Bye. Hello, pile three, and welcome to your reading. So how to release your potential, your untapped potential, your... Wow, okay, so we start with the root chakra. I'll just read it to you. The frequency of the root chakra, the red flower of life, stimulates the passion and supports our sense of security on this physical plane, both in our bodies as well in this physical world. world. Um, so all of the... Um, all of the... Like... Um, readings have been about this sense of stability and bringing something into the reality in order for you to recognize it so that's definitely a recurring theme interesting and we've got sarah's um nurture okay so there's something about nurturing yourself pile three something about being able to to allow yourself to accept this sense of abundance that is within yourself because the root root chakra is upright, so it's it's telling me that something is wanting to come out. Um, yeah, this one. Acceptance. I'm learning to accept the things I cannot change. There's that amazing um, prayer. I'll try and find it for you, Paul. Um, Paul. Uh, three it's called the serenity prayer i'm just going to double check it like it's the prayer that they say um about uh they they do it at the alcoholic uh the anonymous the aa meetings hold on i'm just going to pause it and then i'm going to have a look at for you okay so the prayer is God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. Interesting. So this will be the kind of um, the kind of general over uh, tone of this reading. Synchronicity. Love it. Look at these purples as well. So definitely th um, th um, crown chakra stuff. So something channeling through the divine to come to wanting to come to you and you're ready for it. You're absolutely ready for it.
cleanse and it's reversed so something needs to be clear i did see some kind of blockage going from the top down and i mean it has been yeah it's common with all of the readings but like there's something distinctly about how energy is wanting to come down from the from the universe or from your guides or from your spirit from spirit generally to want to connect to you and root you into this space but there's something i don't know if it's like heart or maybe um or uh svadhisthana um sacral chakra let's have a look facade interesting so it might be to do with the yellow which is with the manipura chakra with the power okay so first off you're already in a state where you're ready to receive what it is you're ready to change you're ready to to tap into this potential i feel like you've got a lot of signs from the universe that has said to you that it is time for you to take this into your hands and to make it happen the thing is is that there may have been some old stuff old cluttered stuff that has congested the um pathways and the channels for you to be able to download this information sufficiently it's almost like you need to delete some old files in order to download the new that's what i'm feeling um there's like old I'm, I'm seeing here i'm seeing dead flowers and you know obviously dead flowers are beautiful they're like really nice things that you can um kind of make some fancy kind of like stuff with i mean i've done it before in the past it's really nice but generally it's a bad omen really to like keep um dried flowers like dead bunches of flowers around you know and um, because unless they're like decorative or whatever it's better to have things that either are living or something that is um kind of already flourishing um so every time like I've, and i don't know if you've noticed that when when flowers are dying you know flies come to them and stuff so things things kind of um get pu get putrid and start to fester so there's this kind of energy i feel like there's this sense that you need to cleanse something quite literally you might need to do something like a kind of like colonic i don't know or something that flushes out the system so some kind of detox because there may be this sense of you thinking that you're doing something thinking that you're doing the things that you're doing but actually there's 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 debris that needs to be cleared here Okay, let's see what the tarot has to say. Dear Spirit, how can Pile 3 release their untapped potential? Release their potential. How Pile 3 releasing their potential. Okay, we've got the Three of Swords reversed. The Three of Wands, nice. The Five of Swords reversed, okay. The Four of Cups. Mm. The Knight of Cups. Oh, this Knight of Cups always gets me every time. I just think, why is he wearing shorts? Like, I don't like it. <laughs> too many, Spirit. I just need maybe one or two more. Thanks. Thank you. Ten of Swords reversed. Interesting. That came up for Pile 2. As I said, like there's definitely similar themes with all three groups. So if you're attracted to any of the other groups, do check them out. Um, right in the Eight of Pentacles. Okay. So. Off the bat, you know. You know what, you've, you know what the path is. You know, I think. You know what you've got to do. You do know. Um, what you're doing already is kind of helping. Um, and I think it might have been whatever practices that you put in place to heal yourself from something that was a massive disappointment. Um, we've got the Five of Swords here as well, which is that sense of defeat. You're kind of getting over that. The swords are falling out. You're starting to reclaim your power in that respect. And your plans that you are putting into place are working. They are coming to fruition. So whatever you're doing, keep doing it, Par 3. It seems like you're doing the right thing. There is something you're ignoring here, though there is and it may be some kind of i don't know you may be distracting yourself with something that may be the easy option it may be like oh that's the easier thing to do 
um, but I'm like not really taking into account that the that the more difficult thing is the actual thing that I can really truly learn from. And you wanna you you want things to to progress in a particular way. I get that sense that you want to achieve this sense of mastery. You want to become really good. You wanna you wanna fulfill this potential. Like you wanna really make it make it like blast wide open. But there's some there's some stuff that you're not seeing. There's something that you're not allowing yourself to receive here. It's almost like you think that you you know it, but but there's something you're distracting yourself with. And I mean, to be honest with you, it's it's quite. I, I, I see, you know, you, you're on the track already of doing this. There's just something that, that needs to be, you're, you are fooling yourself about something. And it's something that you're kind of like uh, romanticizing about in a way. Like letting yourself kind of fool yourself into this sense of security. Um, because you feel like you're doing the work already. Interesting, pile three. Interesting. Let's see what the other cards have to say about this. I'm just going to take a little look at that Sarah's card because that's reversed. Let's see. So I didn't realize, but Sarah's is actually um, Demeter. She is the one who was the mother of uh, Persephone. Um, the one who was responsible for the seasons. Um, so what I'm getting here is an element of change. You can't, like, similar, I think, to pile two, you can't keep on doing the same thing, you know, um, and expecting to get the same results if you want something different. Um, you, you know, that's the definition of insanity, like doing the same thing and expecting something different. So... What I'm getting from that is that there's some kind of um, sense of nurturance that you need to give to yourself. Um, there's almost like a sense of where you need to just also, with like with pile two, take it a bit easy on yourself. But also, um, there's just something about taking care of something. There may have been something that you're not taking care of, that you kind of think might just kind of sort itself out. And... No, it's not going to do that. You need to you need to go there and you need to clean it. You need to like sort it out. Like I said, like you've got it's maybe that that I just see like this this bunch of like dead flowers in the corner and you may think it looks really pretty, but you need to get rid of it. I don't know why I'm seeing that. Um and what I'm really also noticing is this scythe here. So it needs to be it needs to be cut out. It needs to go, it needs to go. And the emotional kind of attachment to it needs to needs to end. Um, that will help unlock, like continue to, to allow the potential to flow through because the potential is coming, it is, it's coming through. It's, it's already coming through, part three. The peacock, reversed, interesting. So with it being reversed, this is the empress reversed and it's interesting with nurture being reversed as well. So I don't know, you may feel that you're doing something already and it's actually it's still not the thing hmm interesting because there's a there's a reluctance to walk through the door of the unknown and if something is unknown it may be freaking you out the maze which is temperance so you i mean to be honest with you i feel you are working towards this sense of balance you are working towards this idea um, and I think you're, you're gearing up to it, but there's this sense of kind of, I mean, I, I'm definitely getting this sense of self-flagellation again, because th this is a, a common thing that stops us from re realizing our potential. So I'm not surprised it's come up in all of the readings, but like with, with the peacock reversed, you've got all of the four Queens all of the negative aspects coming onto yourself so for example there may be like big mood swings that is happening and you're not understanding why there may be um you know you may have negative self-talk that's happening you may um 
you know, uh, you may find that you're being quite dismissive of others and not being able to um, manifest what you want. And then we've got Queen of Swords, Queen of Pentacles, Queen... Of, and then also you're not able to um, kind of make things take root and also um, finding it difficult to be there for other people as well. Now, I think that you, you understand this about yourself and I think that's why you're like really taking considered action here um path three you're on the path there's considered action but it's something to do with the lack of power and it's because there's this sense of lack of nurturance i'm just seeing here with this this person holding this child's hand and it looks like it's a grandparent holding the child's hand and one thing about this is that children and grandparents are really they're really beautiful to come together because they're on the either side of the spectrum in the in the sense that one is going to the space where we don't know in death and then one has just come from there which is the child so there's this kind of connectivity that that has to occur really and i feel that um allowing things to kind of, uh, knowing that this is the process of letting go and allowing things to just be as they are I, I do think that you do this already. I'm not I'm not challenging that. But what I'm saying is that there's something that's even more innate. And when we start to do this work, Path 3, it's an onion. So we, we go through the dark night of the soul. We do some work or we do something that's going to help us to take off that first layer. And we think we've got it all sorted, yeah, right, after that first thing. And then, bam, something else comes in. And then it's like, wow, okay, so we still got more to do. And you're in this process of un unwrapping that onion and, like, taking each layer apart. And this is something that's, that's a bit it's deeper, particularly with that empress reverse you might and in my vipassana training with meditation it's the sankharas it's the it's the aversions the uh the uh, cravings and the ignorance and once we get rid of the first layer then all of a sudden the next layer comes up which is so deeply rooted in ourselves that we need that we need that to come up and i think this consistent acceptance of you um, doing this, of you doing this work. Synchronicity helps you to continue to go on that. To, it gives you the, the, the kind of like the, um, the, goal, the, the green flags to say, yes, you're on the right path. You're doing the right thing. But it's a consistent cleansing. It's a consistent thing. And where, where you may think that you've done it, it's actually probably where there's more work that needs to be done. So, so yeah, and that's, it's interesting here. We've got this four of cups here. It's just, it's just a consistent thing. It's not, you know, I mean, it's interesting how we have the majors here, but we didn't have like any majors here. So it's almost like you're at a stage where you've kind of like gotten rid of quite a lot of stuff already. And now you're going to the next level. So now that you can do that, now you, even more, the, the potentiality can like rise up to the surface. Whereas like par one and par two, they might be a little bit earlier on the journey. Whereas you, par three, it seems like you've done this a couple of times, which is why your root chakra is quite stable and quite like cemented. It's good. It's really good. Good work. I'm really like impressed, like par three, really impressed. Okay, yeah, this is self-flagellation. I don't know, like there may be something to do with the mother line. Okay, um, you've got the Empress, you've got Queen of Swords, and you've got Sarah's Nurture Dem Demeter, that, that mothering energy. I don't know, there may be something that, that, that caused you not to accept yourself or like that you're working on with the mother wound or with the mother line, that there may be something there that, that kind of challenges that stability, which I think you're, as I said, I think you're working on it, but there's, it's deep, it's, it's deep, it's big and it's deep. Um, and with these two here, it, it tells me that there's, you know, this is going to take some patience, it's going to take some work, it's going to take some time, but you're on the right track, you're doing the right thing, continue to do it, continue to do it. There is something that you may deny at that time, like you may deny it initially, but then sometimes that's not the right time to to approach that you know even if we can see blocks in other people sometimes they're not ready to approach those things yet and then when you come to them years later like i'll give you an example like i bumped into a friend of mine recently um that i hadn't seen for years and she'd behaved it to me in a way that wasn't the best and then i just saw her randomly on the train and then she said to me one of the things in that literally 20 minute journey maybe 15 minute journey that we had after not seeing each other for maybe five six seven ten years i don't know how long um she said to me rena i'm i'm really sorry 
Um, I wasn't in a good place at that time. Um, I'm really sorry about that. And I was like, it's fine. But she, you know, she's gotten to this space, to this place where she can see that about herself and understand that. But it's in her own time. You can't tell nobody, yeah? You have to come to that own conclusion yourself. And that's what it's about. So this is, the, this is your work. This is your journey. And this is the king of wands. Yeah, because there's... A, yeah, I mean, you know, it's exactly that. Exactly that. Because you are doing the work. But sometimes you think you are doing the work and then there's other stuff. Just take note of it. If you want to um, kind of elevate your consciousness and being able to untap this potential, it's about noting that and understanding that you might not be ready to deal with that right now. That's fine. That's fine. Just deal with what you can. That's okay. Just do what you can right now. And then you've got the composer, which I think is the king. Oh, my God. Is that the is that the Knight of Cups again? Are we, is the Knight of Cups clarifying the Knight of Cups? Let's have a look. The Knight of Cups. The Knight of Cups. Sorry, my loves. Yeah. No, it's the page. Okay, so you're going back a step. So... Rather than presenting, you are creating. You're coming back to that sense of kind of wonder, of um, not knowing it all. Um, you must unlearn what you have learned in the words of Yoda. Um, and I've said that many times in my readings because I, I'm sure that many of you, you know, you, you come back and you watch my readings. So this is another, this is a thing that's coming back. It's saying like, come back to the space where you don't know anything so that you can create something so pure. Come with that sense of wonderment where you can look at the, the wonder and just start again rather than being, oh, I've got it, you know, I've got something. It's more about you being able to, to, to have a sense of may, a beginner's mind in that respect. Or beginner's, beginner's mind in respect to your emotions, right? Beginner's mind in, in, in being able to, to cultivate that sense of acceptance in a whole new dynamic, in a whole new way. Because I feel like you've done it. That's why the night is there. But it's like, how do we do it again? How do we go back to that point and come back with that sense of vulnerability and really be fresh in that? And that's that's the work. That's the work. Ten of Swords is clarified by the fighter. Wow. I think that is the Knight of Swords. Yeah. So, I mean, you attack this, right? You attack this with, with consistent and persistent determination you want to do this you want to do this work you want to um be good at it you want to do really well and you you are doing really well you are there's a sense of softness that has to come back it's almost like you know you you, you kind of like you're not going to let yourself be ruled by this sense of drama and pain you're going to you're going to work through this and you want to do it in the right way and you want to do it in a good way because you know you've got the eight of pentacles here you want to do it in a consistent way that's going to be the best for you so it's about going back and being able to see where it is that you rushed forward in the first instance. You know, sometimes when we write a first draft of something, we just get all of our thoughts down and then that's like, blam, then we get that. Then it's all about like going back and refining those drafts and being able to like get back into that space where we can we can really um, see the truth of who we are. And there may be things that we don't like. There may be things that we, we, have, to, we have to cull and we have to like just be patient with ourselves to be able to work through that. But it's interesting with the Queen of Swords here, that the critic is very strong here within you, Pile 3. And um, I do implore you to, to really watch out for that critic on yourself and just to, be, just to be gentle with yourself, to be accepting with yourself, to be nurturing with yourself, to understand that, you, you know, to recognize how far you've come, what you've done, you know, um, how far you are on this spiritual path or this path of being able to untap your potential. It's truly beautiful, path three. Oh, wow. Life on Earth. I mean, I can't believe that because we've just talked about that. Now, this deck is in the Major Arcana, 
which is the uh, like the the main 22 cards in the deck from 0 to 21 um, with this particular deck it's signifying the afterlife um, so what happens is that um, the fall what would be known as the fall is actually death so it's when we die it's that moment we die and then we enter that space where we go through this process of transformation and then we end up and then this is the card where you're back on earth so what's so interesting with this with what I said about that you know it's it's this knowledge of of knowing that You've, you've been through so much and it's just a continuous cycle. You just keep continue cleansing. It's a process of cleansing. I think what the main thing here is about you untapping your potential is consistently reminding yourself that this is a process of where you're just cleansing, you're cleansing, you're cleansing, you're unpeeling the onion, you're getting down to the root, you're getting down to the core of your essence, to the, to the real truth of your being. And that's how you're untapping your potential. It's truly beautiful truly it's the world so you know that this is this is a cycle you do you do recognize that you understand that and you're a true warrior in that respect um and i think what's going on is that you you are on the right path part three you are doing what you're meant to do it's just that just be you know you may think that you've hit some like massive roadblocks and you think that you're um digressing on the contrary, you're actually moving forward massively here. You are. There's advanced cards here. You're in you're in an advanced stage of, of kind of progression on this path. So you're doing the right thing. I'm I'm here to tell you keep going. You're doing really well. So um I've got some angelic support for you. Oh wow. Okay, right. So Archangel Mikael. Yeah, he's protecting you because you you're coming up against some big stuff. Yeah. Because particularly with this with this peacock reverse, the dreamer, and Sarah's, you've got you've got these really big big obstacles that are coming up. The deep roots are coming up. So Archangel Michael is protecting you, is around you, nurturing you, and saying to you that it, he is giving you, or Archangel Michael is giving you the support that you need. Um, I'm really feeling if you wear gold. I did mean to really say about gemstones with the piles, but I didn't, and I wish I did. But with you, um, a particular metal that you can work with is gold. Gold is going to be very, very useful for you. Wear it next to your skin. Um, just keep it with you. Um, anything that's gold um, might be really beautiful for you. Um, also working on Sundays, how you do this sort of work that is kind of connecting with yourself. In the seven spiritual laws of success, I attribute... Um, the law of pure potentiality to Sundays. So that's meditation, commune with nature and non-judgment. So meditation, being with oneself, communing with nature, being in nature, which is really helping you to kind of regenerate and um, commune with nature and non-judgment non and not, accept, not judging yourself on how far you've come um, and just accepting yourself where you are. Okay, and then we've got survival, abundance, okay, cool, and Jupiter, wisdom. So I think what this is telling me is like consistently going through the stages of, of coming back to your root chakra and um, recognizing the wisdom that arises from that because it just gets bigger. It's almost like I can see Jupiter just swelling up every time you go on this cycle because you're just, you just, you're just consistently doing this and you're really strengthening your root chakra to root you down so that when you go into the deeper aspects of unleashing this potential, you can also... Um, you can also face the challenges that come with that because, you know, the bigger your potential becomes and the bigger that you are able to tap into that potential, the bigger often the issues that come forward and you're having to deal with them. Maybe then it goes back into ancestral, past life kind of stuff. You know, it just gets deeper and you're like on the road to, to doing that, pile three. So um, this is about you understanding the abundance. And not only that, when you do this healing and you're doing these beautiful things for yourself, not only are you clearing, but you're also um, unearthing the gems and the beauty of the lessons. You're, you know, the gifts. There's gifts that come with this. This isn't just about like just, you know, the gifts of this potential is what needs to be realized here as well. So don't forget that. 
Wow, friendship. Bring to me friendship, true sharing, laughter, and understanding too. There's this, there's this real gentle nurturance energy that that is is dying to come through to you. You know, having a sense of like laughter, of sharing these kind of um, experiences with other people, being able to connect to other people that are doing this, um, and also just enjoying yourself on this process, enjoying what you're becoming, enjoying what you're doing. Um, We've also got the ivy, which is just very kind of indicative of this, this kind of sense of rebirth and growth. And also because it's it's um, kind of related to this month of December, which is when I'm doing this reading. This reading is timeless, but maybe the month of December is also important for you. There's something that will invoke this sense of friendship, not only with others, but with yourself as well. And I think that's the most important thing because we've got the Queen of Swords here reversed. So there's this need to really be a friend to yourself. So what I've been saying to the other the piles is that this is an affirmation that you can say either in the morning to yourself or you can say it just before you go to bed bring to me friendship true sharing laughter and understanding to bring to me friendship true sharing laughter and understanding to bring to me friendship true sharing and laughter understanding to say it to yourself three times um and then just like invoke that beautiful um energy within yourself so that it will just exude with you automatically be planted into your subconscious for it to rise into the conscious self Okay, so then closing out, I've got a question for you to kind of prompt this um, this next stage of your growth, Path 3. This has been an honour, by the way, Path 3, an absolute honour to be able to observe your your journey of unleashing your potential. I'm, I'm really, I'm really honoured to be doing this for you, so thank you. Um, and look at it, by the way, we've got like a lot of purples and blues, so there's just a lot of like um, the, the, the top three chakras, even though you've got the root chakra, it's... Um, You've got all the chakras here, but I'm just seeing a lot of the blue and the heart. So you've got like heart chakra, Manipura chakra, which is solar plexus, um, Ajna and um, Vishuddha, which is Ajna is the third eye. You've also got the um, solar plex um, the throat chakra. So communicating your truth in a really um, like um, authentic sense. And then you've also got the um, crown chakra as well. So things are clearing and opening up for you part three it's just really beautiful really beautiful it's just unearthing some stuff and that's that's where you're you know i'm this is what this reading is affirming that you're doing the right thing and keep going okay let's see what this question is Ariga, origa what will you do with today tomorrow is not guaranteed wow what will you do with today tomorrow is not guaranteed and it's a horse so i mean you know, we've got this this kind of thing of life and death that's happening. And it's almost like I feel that there's this consistent cycle with you, Pal 3. You're going through these these kind of like, you know, cycles and you're, you're understanding what these mean for you. Um, and I feel like it's also helping you to really... In, in, in being able to realise your, your true potential and who you are, it's about understanding the cycles. And we come back to this, this, the original thing of of the seasons, and with Sarah's Demeter, it's the she's the mother of the seasons. So this whole thing of change and acceptance um, is really, really um, prominent for you. I feel pile three incredible reading i love that i hope you liked it if you liked it please do give it a thumbs up please do subscribe for more videos let me know in the comments what you thought of this um but otherwise my darlings i shall see you in the next reading take care and i'll see you soon bye good luck by the way